Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdale here again. In this presentation I'm going to continue some problems on calculus and in particular I'm going to show you how to construct a so-called reduction formula for integration. I'm going to do a basic example that uh, sort of lays out the main ideas. So let me share my screen with you and we can get down to business. All right, so firstly, you'll see that this screen is massive. The, uh, the font, the font is massive. And the reason for that is that I'm trying to get more visible presentations on mobile devices. So if you're watching on a mobile device, uh, please let me know what you think. Okay. So here we have an integral or a, 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 a I sub n defined by this value where the n is the power of this tan function. Okay, so essentially we've got a sequence of values there for n equals say one, two, three, etc. We're asked to do the following thing: construct or derive the following reduction formula. Okay, so Basically, it says that you can compute I sub n through this procedure that relies on I sub n minus 2 and, and this, this uh, value here. Now, it's called a reduction formula because essentially, in, in this case, you're reducing the values of n. So, you know, to compute, say, I sub um, 3, Tan, this integral with tan cubed, you would put 3 in here and you would put 3 in here and you would get I sub 1 and you know you can integrate that to, to, to get I sub 1. So it is a, an iterative process and um, um, it, it's very useful and it actually relies on uh, integration by parts. So this thing, we're going to construct it or derive it using IBP or integration by parts. Okay, now you might look at this and go, okay, it's a power, okay, how, how can I do integration by parts on this? Well, we're going to do something a little sneaky, and we're going to break up that power into the following. So let's, let's just move that up there. Okay, so let's consider the following, okay? I'm going to break up this. I'm going to take a factor of tan squared out of this. Okay, so let, let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, so I've written I sub n as this product now. Okay, now uh, what I'm going to do now is try to get this to a sec squared. Okay, so I can use um, the old chestnut tan squared plus 1 equals sec squared or tan squared equals sec squared minus 1. So let me show you how, how it works. Okay, all right, so I've just basically used tan squared plus 1 equals sec squared. Okay, so now what? Well, you can see that what I'm tr I know where I'm headed. I, I need to get an I sub n minus 2 here. So I want to get something like this with n, re or with n replaced by n minus 2. If I expand this out with the second term, I'm going to get 1 times this, which is going to give me an I sub n minus 2. And I'm going to be left with a product of tan and sec. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so that's taking care of that. And when I 
expand that out, I'll get a minus integral 10 to the n minus 2. That is just this with n replaced by n minus 2. So that's, that's going to be where this is. So I'm just going to write that down now to save a little bit of space. Okay. So all I need to do now is integrate this and um, I'll be I'll be home homeward bound and you you would expect from what's up here that this that this integral will be 1 on n minus 1 and it is but um, how do we actually get that Okay well this integral here is actually the following Now we know that sec squared is the derivative of tan so if I make say make a substitution u equals tan x, I know du is going to be sec squared dx. Uh, uh, u is going to be uh, du is going to be sec squared dx. So when I integrate it, I'll get something like this. Now I will come back to this, so don't don't worry if you don't understand this step completely. Okay. Now, when I put in pi on 4, I'll get uh, 1 to the power n minus 1 here. When I put in x equals 0, I'll get 0. So I get the thing that I'm, that I'm looking for. Okay. So let's just make a conclusion. I sub n equals 1 on n minus 1 minus i sub n minus 2 for n greater than or equal to 2. All right, so we're happy about that. But let's just go back and discuss this a little bit more. How did I go from here to here? Okay, so so let me let me actually just, just explain that a bit more. Now, I'll just write it as... Uh, indefinite integral. Okay, so note the following. This integral here Okay, so basically it's just this thing here without the limits of integration. Okay, so let's consider this. Let's, I know that the uh, derivative of tan is sec squared, so let's, let's say u equal tan x. So um, uh, du equals sec squared x dx. So let's sub in now. So wherever I see tan x, I replace it with u. Sort of a u to the n minus 2. And sec squared dx is just du. So I've got a simple integral now. I increase the power by 1 and divide by the new power. Okay? And I'm not going to worry about the plus c or anything like that. So now I can replace u with tan. And that's, and that's where it comes from. So that and that are identical. Okay, and that, remember that was, the, that was the integral that we worked on before. Now, I did mention integration by parts here before. I actually haven't used that in this particular uh, uh, solution, but it is very, very common in, when you're deriving other reduction formulae. Okay? All right, so that was a good question because um, we sort of knew where, where we were headed. The idea is to save time through a reduction formula, so you're not always doing things like integration by parts. You can just do it in an iterative uh, fashion. Okay, so that's my example involving reduction formulas and integrals. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments or questions, uh, or if you're watching on a mobile device, please let me know what the experience is like, because I'm trying to get better and I always enjoy um, reading your comments. So join me for another presentation in the future, and um, I'll see you all soon. All right, bye.